We've heard a lot about plastics in the news, and it's not been good news. Plastic waste causes so many problems for animals and their habitats. It goes into the food chain, it entangles them, it's awful. But that's not the only problem that plastic causes in the environment. Plastics are made from fossil fuels, and so producing them releases carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, increasing global warming. Globally, the plastics industry produces 3.8% of all greenhouse gases. That's nearly double the aviation industry. So you may think it's a little bit odd that this video is being funded by Dow, one of the largest plastics companies in the world. And I was super skeptical when they emailed me. But they've invited me here to Finland to learn about this new technology they're investing in to make bioplastics, that is, plastics made from wood and not from fossil fuels. So this drastically reduces the greenhouse gas emissions and we're going to need bioplastics technologies like this if we're going to have any chance of reducing global warming in time. So how do you make plastics from wood? Well first, you've got to have a good source of wood. And here in Finland, they're using FSC forests, that is forests that are being sustainably managed, in this case, as part of the paper industry. Many biofuels projects have some pretty big downsides. If you are changing land use, so you're chopping down the Amazon rainforest in order to plant sugar cane, or if you're diverting food out of the food chain, so not only is there less food for humans to eat, but also it's increasing the price of food. Those aren't great. But in this project, this wood was here anyway. This is being managed sustainably to make paper and it's the byproducts of that industry, what would otherwise go to waste, that's being used to ultimately make plastics. Naturally, when faced with the biggest pile of wood chips I've ever seen, my first reaction was to frolic in the chips. Apparently no one has ever frolicked on this chip mountain before. They're missing out. These wood chips have all been produced for the pulp industry to make paper and cardboard and things like that. But wood is more than just pulp. Pulp is just the cellulose part of the wood. And a lot of the rest of the wood is this thing called lignin. It's another structural compound, just like cellulose, like roughage or fiber, but it's waterproof and it's a lot tougher to work with chemically. So in the past, they would have extracted the cellulose out of the wood and then just thrown the lignin part away. Maybe burnt some of it to recover some of the energy, but couldn't really use the chemical properties of it. But that lignin is dissolved into something called crude tall oil. This is what happens when you add a load of alkali chemicals, heat and pressure to the wood. You end up with this beautifully white pulp to make paper and this brown sludgy stuff. This is the unrefined lignin. Yako knows everything there is to know about the biorefinery here. So I asked him some very scientific questions. So why is it called tall oil? Because it's not very tall. Uh, it comes from the Swedish language. Okay. Tall oil, yeah. It means pine tree. <laughs> okay, so this is pine oil. In a way. In it's essence. Yeah. Okay. Does it smell like pine? No, it doesn't. No? Uh, no, it doesn't. It smells like a bit like a cooking chemical, so it is. Okay, so. It is not the fresh. Uh, not like food, air no. freshener, little thing you hang up in your car. Do a little waft. Oh, oh, yeah, that's. That's weird. It's a bit of like, like a tar. Added with. It uh, is. With sulfuric. sulfuric uh, you definitely oh. get that egginess from the sulphur, yeah. but you also get a kind of smoky... Yeah, that's, that's... I would never have guessed that to come from a tree. And what UPM have worked out how to do is how to turn this into this. This colourless liquid is naphtha, and so that's a mixture of hydrocarbons, so things like petrol, diesel, all of those short chain uh, carbon and hydrogen molecules that are super useful not only for biofuels but also for making plastics. In the biorefinery with the crude soil oil, mm -hmm. where with the catalysts, uh, high pressure, high hydrogen pressure and, and temperature, uh, we are chemically converting this uh, syrup-like material into 
bright and clear, pure hydrocarbons. So catalysts are the, the secret sauce. Yeah, so, this so, does look like sauce. This looks like something you'd pour over meat. So it, it depends on the, on the selection of, of different catalysts that what will be the, the reactions taking place. Mm -hmm. Then the hydrocarbons are distilled and then the liquids, uh, the light boiling hydrocarbons are the naphtha components. And what's great about this, this bio naphtha, is it is chemically identical to naphtha that's come from fossil fuels. You can't tell just by looking at an unlabeled bottle that it's been made from wood chips. And so you can pour bio naphtha straight into the machines that produce these. These are plastic noodles or the most basic form of plastic. And one use of these wood derived plastic noodles is packaging. And this packaging is kind of cool because it not only has the plastic component, the lignin part of the wood, but obviously there's a lot of paper involved in this as well. So it's also using the cellulose part of the wood. And what they're doing here means that no part of the wood gets thrown away. You get entire logs coming in. First it goes to timber. If it can't be used for timber, it's used for pulp. If it can't be used for pulp, it's used to make naphtha. And that naphtha goes on to make plastics. And anything that's left over can then get burnt to generate enough electricity to run the entire plant so that this plant is self-sufficient. It, it doesn't need to take energy off the grid. In fact, it provides electricity to the rest of Finland. Thomas is the product director for Dow and oversees this whole project to make bioplastics from wood. So what are the benefits of using wood-based naphtha? Look, it's another sustainable solution that we are looking into. And the big benefit is actually reducing greenhouse gases. So if we replace one ton of fossil fuel with one ton of bio naphtha, mm -hmm. we are saving 2.86 tons of greenhouse gases. That's so cool. And that means that when you scale it up and you're producing hundreds or thousands of tons of bio naphtha, that's going to make it a, a noticeable difference in greenhouse gas emissions. Correct. We can multiply this effect the more we scale it. So what is special about this project? So special about this project is that it's scalable. It's the first time that we can offer a scalable product that actually our customers can use then to produce the packaging. And your customers aren't the people going to the supermarkets. They're the people who make the products that people at home buy. Correct. And so for them to say, we want to make sustainable, we want to only use sustainable plastic in our packaging. We want to use stuff that's been derived from wood. That's a big deal. Yes, it is. First time we actually have, can have a choice, right? We can have a choice um, buying something that is made out of fossil fuel or buying something that is made out of renewable sources. That's really cool. Yes. <laughs> I have so many flies in my hair right now Me that too. I can't. Carsten is the commercial director and as the voice of Darren on this trip, I wanted to ask him some of the tougher questions. But fair play to him. He was happy to answer them all. Dow is one of the biggest plastic companies in the world. Is that safe to say? That's safe to say. So why are you interested in bioplastics? So one of the reasons, we are one of the biggest producers mm -hmm. in the world, but we are not interested to see plastics in the environment. We're also not interested in consuming a lot of the resources in the world. So we're very interested in this partnership with UPM and bioplastics from renewable feedstock sources because it's a good way of actually saving on fossil fuels and using renewable sources to produce plastics. There's always the risk that if someone in the supermarket sees, oh, this is a sustainable plastic, they're like, oh, I've done my bit now, I can just throw it away and forget about it. Yes. Are you, like, is there anything you can do there? Because recycling plastic is surprisingly difficult. I literally have a PhD from Oxford and I can be stood by the recycling bin trying to work out if it's recyclable or not and what bin it has to, like, it's hard. Right, it is. It is very complex. And I have the same situation at home. Is this recyclable? This is not recyclable. Mm -hmm. Which is why one of the things that we're focusing on is designed for recyclability. So we should, as consumer, know that when we pick down that package from the mm -hmm. shelf, it's recyclable. We have technology in that field that we can apply and we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we are doing that. And then to your, to your other points, we're working on other things that we can bring plastic back either via an oil or into the same kind of application in a circular system because we really believe that plastic should be part of the circular economy like other materials. So what is the circular economy? 
So a circular economy is, you, you, today, we're working in a linear economy. So we make the plastic, we, you, we use the plastic, mm -hmm. we throw the plastic away. Yeah. So what we want to do is that the plastic is not thrown away, but it comes back as a raw material for our production. Mm -hmm. Either in the shape of, like I explained before, mechanical recycling, so it's washed, it's shredded, and go back into an application. Or if it's really lower quality, we turn it into an oil, and then we make plastic from it. So we all know that plastics are terrible in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, that they, um, when they end up in the environment, that they're a terrible polluter that just never go away. And Dow has been making money doing this for the last few decades. Is this initiative just too little too late? So to your point, no one wants to see plastic in the environment. We don't want to see plastic in the environment. We believe that plastic is way too valuable to end up in the environment. And this initiative with UPM on renewable feedstock is just one of four initiatives that we're actually driving. You know, we don't support plastic if plastic is not the most sustainable choice for an application. Mm -hmm. We don't support overuse of plastics. So, yeah. yeah. Which I have to point out, you've been saying on this trip that Dow does not support the overuse of plastics. I think that that is huge for a plastics company to say, you know what, we could make money by selling you plastic for this use, but we'd rather not. Dow is a big company. Yes. And big companies at the end of the day are gonna try and want to make more money because otherwise the company wouldn't continue to exist. So how are you making money from sustainable plastics? So we have, we have to remember one thing, that this is the market that's demanding this. It is us as consumer. Mm -hmm. We want plastic to be recyclable. We want recycled content. We are driving this. This is not an initiative about making more money. This is us engaging in making plastic part of the circular economy. A recent study found that if we're going to significantly reduce the amount of greenhouse gases produced by the plastics industry, we're going to have to do four things. We're going to have to reduce demand, we're going to have to recycle the plastics that we do make, we're going to have to use bioplastics, and the energy we use in producing has to come from renewable sources like wind energy or tidal energy. But this study also found that doing just one of those isn't enough. Just recycling isn't enough. Just reducing demand for plastics isn't enough. We've got to do all four. And so whilst it's great that on a small scale, individuals reduce how much plastic they use, using a reusable coffee cup, not taking a plastic straw if you don't need one, that's great, but we need big scale changes on the scale of big companies like Dow if we're going to make a big enough effort. Although Dow may have been part of the global problem, we need them if we're going to have a global solution that's going to be effective. Plastics are useful materials. They can reduce emissions from food waste. They can be made sterile for medical uses. Plastics are useful and they're here to stay. So as long as we think about where we're getting the materials from, about the energy that goes into them and how we dispose of them, they're going to be around but they needn't necessarily be quite so bad for us. This video is part of Team Trees. We are all across YouTube making videos about trees and the environment to try to plant 20 million trees by the start of 2020. And the way you do that is you donate a dollar at teamtrees.org or at the YouTube donate button just below this video. And Arbor Day Foundation, who are a tree planting charity, have agreed that they will plant a tree for every dollar raised, which means that you can plant 10 trees in less than the time it takes me to plant a single tree in Finland. What can I say? The ground was very hard. It was surprisingly tough to plant that tree. And then once you've planted your trees all around the world, um, go and search the Team Trees hashtag all across YouTube. You'll see there are massive creators that you'll almost certainly have heard of and smaller ones to discover new YouTubers across all different genres making videos about trees and the environment. And we're gonna try and take over YouTube from now until the end of the year so that the trending page is just videos about trees and the environment and all of your recommendations are about trees and the environment and climate change. How cool would that be? And what a great message would that send out? So go to teamtrees.org, find out more, donate, 
plant your trees, spread the world and let's make more trees in the world. <laughs>